Okay, so um, is anybody new? Do you know? Oh, uh, John, you're not new, are you? I spoke up just now. Otherwise, there we go. Uh, this is my, my second meeting. Um, found the first one extremely interesting. Uh, I, I, I really kind of don't, you know, I'm going to probably just sit in the background here, but, um, you know, yes, this is my second time. All right, great. All right, well, the topic that the whole talk is framed in is non-duality, and just let's take it by the definition. So it's not non is not, duality is two. Now, duality is, is more subtle in a way and very, very, very more pervasive than he or she, subject, object, yes or no, this or that, hot and cold. It's, uh, it's the way, it's like the, the two currents of the dreaming, so to speak. Underlying that is space and time, let's say, but then there's the interpretation of the dreaming is a dualistic one. So you can see somebody is an addict seemingly and then they recover. It has all these different swings. Things contract and they expand and contract and they expand. So basically you start seeing that as not real. Not that there's anything else that's real, but you see that as not real. And then it leads to obviously the dualism because basically in the dreaming, all roads lead to us in a sense. Inevitably, you have to look at where you are because it seems to be giving it the meaning to everything else. And the location of everywhere else is sort of based on our location. So the the non-duality is just uh, it's just a beautiful what it's intending is already so so it's such a beautiful in a sense solution to the problems here because in a sense it tells us there is no problem and not in an inch it's not meant just to land on the intellectual airport, but it goes somewhere else. Like in recovery, we call it the innermost or somewhere. It's an aspect of what we are that may not be being noticed much while we're living day in and day out as this little action figure. So the non-duality is, uh, is basically the premise is you are what you're looking for or you are what you're <laughs> you are you are the looking of what you're not looking for let's say so you are what you're looking for basically the seeker is the sort mm, what's looking is what you're looking for there's a lot of ways of saying it but they're implying that you're it in a sense now if you're it how much would it take to get that? Yeah, I mean, this is what you notice here. If you are a lion, no matter how long you've taken yourself to be the sheep, and you're in a little sheep village, and a, a preacher, a lion preacher comes in and looks at you as it does a lot of other sheep, and he says, you're a lion. And then you feel something hit, like something other than the familiar sheepness, something hits and there's a resonance or whatever you want to call it. And there's an excitement that comes after that. And then some other things come after that, that go unnoticed where the programming that has the lion believing, believing or just lazily assuming or just unknowing being a sheep or taking itself to be a sheep, uh, kicks back in and it's a very quick kicking back in you can get a hit most hits let's say at a meeting or something don't last that long there's a something a whack 
like an unspoken yes you finally hear or an echo that you're familiar with, but then it gets drowned out by the claiming of being the one who heard the echo. And that once again, the emphasis, instead of what the echo implied, the echo, let's say, coming out of nothing, it's used or claimed to imply the one that heard the echo. And this goes on unabated all day. Whatever uh, the mental sentience gets brought into contact with through us, through consciousness, it claims it. It doesn't, and there's no territory that uh, is forbidden to it. Now, I believed in my sense, yeah, I could see a lot of areas that that would be the case, but I thought spirituality had a, a sense of being different or on a higher realm or a more noble calling, but it's just basically something else to be claimed in a sense. So the claiming occurs, the lioness reverberates, but now it's held as a sheep, you see? So let's say you go back, see that same person who seemed to be a lion and you go and listen that you're a lion again and then you're trying to re-trigger that feeling and maybe it does re-trigger but it doesn't seem to stabilize because something else without us knowing it slips in and suddenly assumes that the hearing of the message was done by you the you that you're not so then you keep going to meetings and maybe oh you suddenly you start realizing i'm not really getting it the way i should be getting it or whatever so maybe you switch teacher or and especially with Zoom and stuff, YouTube, you can go to dead masters, live masters. And you're, so you go to them thinking it's the teacher or someone else. But basically, it's an activity of the mental state that the person under it doesn't seem to have an understanding of it. Yeah. And so a lot of what comes uh, after non-duality is presented is really warnings about how the dualistic system will arise and claim to be the hearer of the message of you are what you're looking for, yeah? And it has the basic movement, you know, there was a famous Buddhist teacher cutting through spiritual materialism, Chunkapa Rinpoche, he used the term ego, I don't like the ego, but he would say that the first paragraph of that book, which is very, very cool, because he was questioning the, basically what we're questioning. He saw something was happening under the category of spirituality. He was calling it materialism, but it was just being, it was being given names by the claiming of it. Yeah. And so, and so basically the spiritual, it became a materialism in a sense, and you've lost the whole spirit of what we thought that the, the word spiritualism meant, yeah, or spirited or whatever. So this is, I don't see it as an ego, but he would say the ego's modus operandi was to claim whatever it was brought into contact with. Now I've seen that, you know, and I would say it's the self thing, which is a mental activity that arises all the time we're having experiences and they're seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, thinking, you know, going about the day, doing and all like this, the mental state is in the act of claiming all that to imply there's a doer, a thinker, a feeler, a haver, a loser, uh, a self that's not a self and on and on and on and on and on. And it can go to absurd lengths, but it's amazing how uh, under-investigated it is, really. So I felt when I heard satsang and I had that hit and I got the sense, almost like a dog when it hears something new, it does a little crook in its neck. I had that in a way and I, I felt, uh, this is novel, you know? This is like, this is a whole different ball game non-duality. It doesn't have the same format as all this other seeking. It's telling us how uh, the seeking in and of itself being claimed 
is reinforcing what we're not more than reinforcing the arrival or the attainment of the goal of what we are, which was a huge surprise to me. <laughs> oh, and there was a lot of these statements that sort of questioned the spirituality that I had been introduced to, yeah? And then all the different paths basically were held in the same format, though. So there was a, I was going to have to do stuff or undo stuff or purify stuff or uh, fill new shit in, or somehow it seemed to always be about me. Even in the process of wanting to become a knower of God, the emphasis was more on the knower than the God. Yeah, the knower was getting all the attention and interest, not that, not the God that there was a wanting to know of. You know, so when I heard non-duality and some of the ensuing warnings, it just fit. You know, it just fit, and it brought about an end to certain things, not a slowing down or, but an end, uh, it's sort of like, you know, you wear a different pair of glasses every day, and then one day you just don't pick any of them up again, yeah, you're just seeing, and that naked seeing, not so much, uh, after the claiming of it to imply the seer, but the seeing, and you get a real sense that it is before the mental activity, way before it, in a sense, and it's never going, and the mental activity is never going to be before that. That awareness doesn't have something before it. It's, there isn't someone or something that's aware. There's awareness, and then Therefore, there can be an awareness of the activity that's being used to imply a you. So you can see what's pointing, the habitual pointing, and the only real trick about it is what it's pointing at, it implies it's already so. It's not like, oh, we're in the making of a self, or we're going to become a self, it's not like the path to the truth, where you're always trying to make yourself into a better self and arrive at the truth. No, it says you're already that. So when, it tell, when, it, when the selfing is pointing, using the seeing to point to the seer, the seer is, is given a sense that it's been a historical seer. It's a trippy feeling. And you can recognize, you can recognize it and have the feeling and yet not go under its trance. You can have the feeling of the historical making of something that isn't so. It's a, like, a, it's an assertion, a historical assertion of something that could never be so. It's, it's amazing. And so if you look at the process, it's, um, we're thrust in, we're looking for what we are from what we're not, and what's being used to look for what we are is what's looking, is what we are. So we're using what we are to find what we are. And then you run into statements such as Hoang Po, a great Zen master statement is, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. That's exactly <laughs> What was my observation? I was using what I was looking for to look for it. <laughs> I was that. Yeah. So when the Buddha hears the message of, hey, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha, that can go somewhere. When I hear it, it just confuses what I'm not more than ever. And especially sometimes it can be seen as a threat because let's say I've been using Buddhism for 30 years to arrive at some of the qualities of what, what I think the Buddha nature is. Yeah, that would be taken as a threat if someone said, hey, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha because <laughs> the mental state would present your books and you've been working and using it for 30 years 
who wants to see that? You know, so not you. I mean, not what you're not. What you're not, that's the last thing it wants to see. So you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can't use light to seek light. You can't use mind to seek mind. That's not a, that's not like a, a spiritual tongue twister. It's something to hear and let it, and let it rummage around and see what comes up. Maybe it will fit you. Maybe the shoes that we're offering here will fit you. And then the shoe itself will tell you a lot. Just allow it to do its thing. And, you know, maybe you'll have the same observation that I had. I lost all interest in liberation because what needed liberation is not me. Yeah. I lost all interest in looking for what I can't find. I lost all interest in using what's looking to look for what's looking. It just made, it just makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. And so you are what you're looking for is really a fact. And so the looking for it is what's causing it to be sort of confusing. Yeah. Actually the way the looking for it, the what's looking that's being used to look for it is the way to disguise it. It's a trip. Yeah. The only thing I feel that could fool reality is reality. And I would say we're reality. Yeah. So, all right. It's basically, I have a weird year. So it sounds like one of my speakers is broken. So it's very strange. It's like reverberating, reverberating inside my head. <laughs> So, all right. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, anybody want to raise their hand? Oh, well, good night. Well, I, I'll Richard, nice to see you, Kerry. Nice to see you, Judith. Mandeep, very nice to see you, Walter, Bev. Mike, thanks for the service. Oh, I had a comment. John K. Oops. Tommy. Can you hear me with your ears? Tommy. Or your ears not hearing me? I can hear it. I can hear you, yeah. Okay. So I had a comment while we're waiting. That along the lines of what you're saying about it can be seen or taken as a threat. And the Course in Miracles that has the, you know, the, the whole background of the first imagined thought was an idea of separation and the only the only problem was it wasn't thought to be laughed at at that moment and within the within the community of a course of miracles that can be taken very seriously like oh god that's terrible i didn't you know i didn't laugh we didn't laugh whatever as opposed to it's funny now <laughs> it's not trying to say that you have to like retrace all the steps to get back to when it was funny it's, and you can't prove what's funny or not funny, right? Because if it's taken as a threat, you don't want to laugh in somebody's face. <laughs> but that's, that's all, you know, it's like our friend Nick was really funny about uh, the idea of, of uh, you know, the, if, the, if, this, if the shoes fit, the, you know, then wear them. But then from the outside, it can be like, well, force me, tell me how, let me know first that they're going to fit first before I try them on. <laughs> Right, how that, instead of just like being comfortable enough to try them on. So I thought that was funny. Well, the thing is, in a weird way, on a very, very small level, that could be one of the sort of byproducts is that which you took seriously before the narration of going on every day. Uh, it's seen as a comedy show. Yeah. So basically, that's on a on a smaller version, it's the same principle. Yes. Yeah. So the idea of separation, if it was laughed at, yeah, the, the idea of separation wouldn't have gotten any traction. Yeah. Because reality in a way took it seriously. Yeah. So now as a reality, as we are in our little stage every day, the same event is occurring there's thoughts appearing 
yeah, false evidence, we'd say most of the thoughts, they're appearing real. So again, reality is taking it seriously, yeah? Now the change isn't in reality, and it's not in the thoughts, it's in how it's taken, yeah? That's all. That's, uh, <laughs> that's basically it in a nutshell, yeah? So you see, there's got to be a lot of attention to take something that's totally insane seriously, yeah? There's got to be a lot of interest in it. And so this is why it's very weird because the, mostly during the day, the interest and the attention has been militarized by this system of self-centeredness, yeah? It's, a, it's constantly lending heaviness to all these activities. And mostly you can produce a category of what's not happening, where all, all you're running into is the seriousness of how you've taken the thoughts. <laughs> That's what you're running into. The thickness of the trees that you seem to have to cut through is completely based on the faith in the thoughts that are projecting those trees. Yeah. Now, how are you going to go to each tree and try to not to take them seriously? That's taking us seriously. Yes, obviously. It's a little conundrum. So let's just see if we're what we think we are or not. And if we're not, not, not lending an incredible seriousness, seriousness to this and its escapades all day will also be lent to all the other things that this is being sent, said to be the owner of or the doer of or the haver of, yes? So if the haver is what's giving meaning to a lot of the shit that's had, yeah? Why try to keep changing the meaning of what's had? Just see, are you the haver? Yeah? It's sort of like a domino. If you look at the whole field of dominoes, it can look very daunting. If you just knock the one down, yeah, da, 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 it just goes on and on and on. That's why we attempt with this platform not to go to any uh, other topics, yeah? Just to keep bringing it back to the fundamental premise is you are what you're looking for believe it or not just that's the premise and then why and if you are what you're looking for then obviously you some of us have looked a long long time the looking for it must be one of the obstacles <laughs> or the obstructions yeah i mean you can, and you come to that conclusion through observation. It brings you there, yeah? So now you realize what you've been relying on or what there's been a reliance on is unreliable, yeah? So if you take the balls out of the juggler's thing, yeah? The juggler will keep doing this for a while, but then it'll stop, yeah? Now you, if, if you can't, if you take one out, it's not enough. You gotta throw a lot at it. So then it keeps trying to juggle more and then it collapses. And then and you'll see it doing its thing. Ball or no ball, yeah? And you'll recognize it's the system. It's not the juggler. Juggling ain't doing it, yeah? You can't use what you're not to find what you are. You come to some finalities about these these uh, shares, yeah? And then there's a moving on, really. There is a levels of being convinced where there's a moving on from a lot of the shenanigans, yeah? And then you're seeing blue is blue and red is red and green is green, yeah? You see it, yeah? Because you're the disguising agent. When this changes, everything seems to change without changing at all, yeah? Because you and I, as the Course would say, the Course of Miracles, are giving, not that we gave, we are giving everything all the meaning it has. It's a present tense activity. It's not like you and I 
we gave everything all. No, we are in the act of giving everything all the meaning it has. And that meaning can be dualistically described as extremely serious or fucking comedic, basically. Yeah, I mean, it really comes to that. Yeah. <laughs> it can be the exact same material. It's just how it, how it's held. Yeah. So the whole idea of the course with the separation. It's so funny because we we live from this foundation of being separate and then we want to unite. <laughs> and then the attempt to unite is reinforcing the separation. <laughs> you don't see it. It's it, this examples everywhere. You can watch it. You can see the fundamental, like we had a talk in the uh, recovery thing. And so people were saying, all right, simple, uh, perhaps there's a better way, the whole view of recovery from the AA point of view. The better way is trusting something infinite rather than finite self, yes? But what happens if there's an identification as the finite self? Now, if there's an identification as the finite self and it starts trying to trust the infinite, it's just trusting the finite self. Yeah, you see it? It's not what non-duality is not punishing us. It's just pointing out a little aberration in the programming that we're not going to overcome. Yeah. If if I'm identified as that which I should not trust. Yeah. And I turn to trust the infinite as the finite, the real the trust isn't going to the infinite it's reinforcing the finite, yeah? And then I have a transactional deal with this made up God that, all right, I'll surrender my life over to it unless something comes up that's important and I'll take it back. <laughs> and then surrender, take it back. So that's not it. That's trusting in the finite, yeah? So how are you gonna get out? by realizing you were never in, yeah? Have you ever thought truly that the best strategy would be do nothing, yeah? This is ultimately apropos when it comes to us, <laughs> truly. <laughs> Just hear Sat saying, hear it, listen, you know, hear it. It's not listening to it, hearing it, something, get something. And then see where it takes you. And maybe uh, more will be revealed. Yeah. And then non-duality will be a fact. Yeah. Whatever non-duality implies, but a nonness without a oneness or a two-ness just it is what it is, and there's nothing else but it, yeah? Some sense of, of not a coming together and uniting, but an impossibility of anything being apart, yeah? Yeah, so. You ready for your first hand? Yes. John, before he goes to sleep, wants to ask a question. On you. There you go. I'm right here. Okay. It's it's extremely hard to to hold on to my question for, for such a long time. It's not really a question, but more of a, a statement. It's there's a stepping off of non dualism. I mean dualism, which is what we are used to, and I'm talking in a way that I can just describe what I want to say onto non-dualism that that 
it is what it is. It's not real. It's it's and it is real. It's both real and non-real. And so a way of getting there is the domino. But it's about maybe taking a brick at a time off of the wall of dualism. When we look at something or a situation or anything, seeing it as, well, it's real, but it's not real, indirectly. And from there, the dominoes start to fall, the wall, the the, you know, the dams, the hole in the wall starts in the dam and it, you know, it keeps falling down. At least this seems to be a way that I'm starting to perceive more and more dual, non-dualism, that everything is one, but it's nothing at all. But looking at everything in my situations and things that pop up and saying, well, wait a minute now, it is real, but it's not real. And this is my start, my tiny step that I can move forward into a more non-dualistic perception of things. Things don't change, but my, but my, my perception becomes more, uh, <laughs> more real, but not real. <laughs> That's it. That's what, you know, I, I, my, my point is, is I was trying to find out a way that I personally could, could conceive of this and start to move in that direction. And then, and, and this today, this afternoon kicked in that it's about, yeah, I'm seeing this, observing this as dualistic, but no, uh, uh, get rid of that. And it's real, but not real. All right, next question. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, John. And Mandeep's hand is up, asking to unmute now. Okay. Hey, Paul. Mandy. Um, so a few weeks ago, I reported that I was catching myself selfing and which was causing me to disengage uh, through going through the day. And now there seems to be a, a general disinterest in most of the activity around me, but there is also another thing arising which says, oh, I want to engage with this, but in this way. You know, it's almost like I, I'm going to make a choice to engage or not engage, and I will, I will engage it in it only you know, with this um, orientation, for lack of a better word. And um, I seem to be happier doing it. At least people around me are reporting that way, but I'm just wondering if that's another play of the self. Well, it can and it cannot be. It matters and then it doesn't matter. But if, if you're happier and the people around you are happier, carry on. Yeah. A lot of times people have to go through a lot of revolutions of stuff and then uh, uh, In all honesty, like, happiness oh, is not God. what I'm seeking. Hmm? In all honesty, happiness is not what I'm seeking. Well, you're stuck with it then. Okay. <laughs> I guess you have a lot of say about shit. <laughs> That's the real message. <laughs> hey, I, would, I didn't want this. Well, 
That's the package you got. There'll be plenty more coming, Mandeep. You can try to return it, but it won't go anywhere. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to resist anything either. But the idea of, you know, I seek this is also not there. But well, yeah, I, yeah, I want to engage but... in, the, in this thing because, yeah, it'll be fun for a little while. Okay, let's do this. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, that's great. It's not you. So, I mean, this is the thing we just talked about. In most cases, Let's not get into all the particulars of how all the U's are structured, but in most cases, they're taking, I would they're taken uh, seriously to a great extent, yeah? yeah? And there's a great relief when just a couple of percentage points of that seriousness drop. Now, you can't produce that that would be seriousness again. But you can observe it. So you observe that you're happy. You didn't ask for it, so it doesn't matter. So you observe something. That's more the role than the idea of, you know, I didn't want this, so I'm sending it back. You know, let's say I wanted 70,000 and then 30,000 come. I'd take the 30. <laughs> I have nothing to do with it. I don't deserve it, but fuck it, you know. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> but the idea of traveling lighter is really that. Uh, a lot of us are serious motherfuckers, really. Yeah, we are. We got, we've got different, uh, you know, fucking logs up our ass, different ones we ass that are asserted every other day. But, you know, it would be nice just not to take ourselves so seriously. And the really, the, the only, that ability is innate when you see your not self. That's what happens. When you see your not self, the, the exorbitant amount of taking it seriously definitely dwindles up. Yeah. It may have its day here or there, but basically uh, that attention and interest is going somewhere else. It's not going to it. Yeah. So I just care. I just care about you, man, deep. I, I may be wrong, but I, I think I feel you're a very serious person. And sometimes that seriousness uh, can be an obscuring agent. Yeah, it could be, it can sort of cloud things up when you really want to be able to peer through it better. Yeah, it's so funny how life is. So yeah. I mean, um, I I'm hoping by coming here, mm -hmm. there'll be, a, you know, having some fun, we'll laugh a little bit, and you'll notice yeah. down the road that you're traveling a little lighter, and it has to do with uh, a lack of seriousness, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, some people get worried when that seriousness goes to their outside situation, and they realize, hey, I'm not interested in anything anymore. And it's sort of scary mm -hmm. because the story is really needs a lot of prop to keep the story going. So when mm -hmm. interest in all the props start, start moving and going somewhere else, people tend to get a little concerned then. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing to be concerned about. That interest and attention is just getting going to be redistributed. Yeah. Okay. That's what yeah. Almost as if you have another life. Yeah. It's sort of cool without having to go through a a dark night of the soul to be reborn, you get to be reborn a lot of times. Yeah. So, yeah, just, uh, see, I have a, I've, I've been at, the, it's sort of like, I've been at these births before. Yeah. The seat assignment of talking and inviting people for all these years, I've watched the birth of these ideas thousands of times. Yeah. And I've worse, I've, I've observed the reactions to people concerning those rebirths. And I'm here to say, we're incredibly good hands in a sense, yeah? I mean, uh, the head will find a lot of shit to get concerned about, yeah? 
but there's really nothing concerning. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna be, you're like a deck of cards that had all the cards lined up in a certain way that became familiar. That deck is gonna get shuffled, yeah? And the, the, the cards are gonna appear differently and you're mm -hmm. gonna see a whole new game in it all. Yeah, with the same cards. It's just how they're placed and where they are. And you'll see it and you'll know, you'll know the tree by its fruits. You'll, yeah. you, you, Mandeep, not your intellect, you. You'll get it, yeah, you'll get it. Yeah, the intellect won't be the only mitt that you can catch the ball by, yeah? It'll become a sense feltness, so, you know? It's like, there's a knowing before knowing, there is. There's a knowing before knowing. There is there is a completion before all the desires to be completed. There's a completion before it, yeah? There's a freedom from the bondage that ne doesn't necessarily come after the bondage. It's before the bondage. Yeah, there is. I'm serious. Yeah. So I'm just saying, you know, uh, see, this year, the Mandeep show is turning into a comedy. Yeah. Now, Mandeep, who's been playing, let's say, the Fonz in the Mandeep show, is used to his old role, but he's moving into a new role, yeah? Mm -hmm. Maybe the leather jacket, well, he can take that off, you know? And, think, and you know, it'll be the same show, the Mandeep show, but basically it'll be Mandeep will play a lesser role, which will be great for Mandeep. It really mm -hmm. will. And then other aspects of the show will become a, play a larger role, yeah? Mm -hmm. Maybe the set, maybe the the fucking whatever. And so uh, you are, this is happening already. I've watched you, yeah, in the Zoom. I've watched Kerry. I've seen Kerry, her, his whole facial structure loosen up. I've seen it already. So, you know, yeah, try to know as much as you want, but you already got the message, yeah. You did. The message was the spiritual subpoena was already in was already in the mail slot. <laughs> we just knocked on the door. You, the the subpoena has been there for a long time. Now you picked it up and you're gonna be you know asked to asked to come into the court of light. Yeah, it's much different than the mental courts you've been going through. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I have great, you know, yeah. I hope that gets it through a little bit. It's just a sense I have about everyone I see here. Yeah. You're truly way more okay than you think you are. Way more. Thinking is putting you in matter. like an old, the thinking wants you in like a, a, a size eight thin, you know. <laughs> he just wants to fucking keep sticking that foot in there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but you've outgrown it. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, Mandy. Um, and we've got Hillary of St. Pete, St. Petersburg, Florida. Asking her to unmute now. Hi. Uh, thank you so much, Paul, and the chair people. So I play around with this like a uh, cat toy, like it, it, I bat it back and forth around in my head. And I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. And that's probably part of the problem. <laughs> But I've been sober 25 years, and I, I learned a long time ago not to take myself seriously. Um, I take my recovery seriously, and that's, and that's pretty much it. Um, just, so when you're saying, so just for my clarification, please. So self is 
the bondage of self is me trying to get out of self. So am I spirit? Well, no, the bondage of self is, is that you think there's a me trying to get out of self. Okay, so then, then, so well, then what the am I? Not me that's trying to get out of self. Okay, so, so then what am I? My, I'm spirit, correct? I think well, that's what you know, what you are, because you are it, is really, it's not necessary. You are it. Why, you don't need to know it. <laughs> you are it. I don't yeah. need to define it. Why would you? It would be what you're not trying to define what you are. What we're sharing here isn't that there's a me. We're sharing that there isn't a me. What happens is an activity occurs. The mental state claims the activity, says it has something to do with a me, and then the me miraculously is bef put before the activity, and then you think you did it. Yeah? That's what happens. It's a movement. It's like, it's, it's like a, it's like a one-trick pony. Yeah? The mental state comes into contact with what we bring it into contact with. We are the ones who are conscious. We are consciousness, let's say. We're in contact. When contact is made, the mental state arises and claims the contact to imply you, a you, a you. The you then suddenly there's a capturing of attention and interest. So now that a you becomes you. And then in a short period of time, it has a ceremony where it's crowned and called me, which is completely different and unique from any other you. There's only one me, yet there's millions of a you's, but there's only one me. This is the self, this is a coronation in the system, by the system, as the system, and you're not of the system, yeah? This is what we're getting at. We're not getting at we have to get out of self. We're getting at we're not in self, yeah? We have never, there has never been a self. There's selfing that implies that there's a self, yeah? So we swallow the narration, and then suddenly we seem to find ourselves. See, basically, the narration takes a shit, the mental state takes a shit, the shit is you, and then the you is projected to be four, and now is the one who took the shit. Yeah? So it's like shit coming out and claiming to be the one who took the shit. Yeah. So the me talks about a me and says it's the me that's having the me. It's all self can't get out of self. Why can't self get out of self? Because there's no self to get out of and there's no self to get out of it. Yeah, that's one of the many reasons why. So the whole point of these talks is to share with you a recognition of the mental activity that its whole narration is based on an assumption that we're something that we're not. And if you listen to the narration long enough, there's going to be an assumption that you're that which is being talked about all day. That's the dilemma, yeah? That's the source of irritable restlessness and discontent. It's a, it, has a, it begets a lot of activities with us, without us knowing it. And therefore, we make diagnoses that are not correct. We're constantly going on wild goose chases, trying to get out of self as self, because we think it's Paul, a.k.a. As a self, trying to get out of self. Now, if Paul was seen to be this activity of selfing, a product of it, then that thing called Paul, what you really are, would stop trying to get out of self. Yeah? 
will the system stop trying to get itself? No. But you'll not be interested in the system trying to get out of self as self. You'll lose interest in it because it's not freaking you. Yeah? And what happens? Then you find relief not after, not as a self, but from self. That's why in recovery it says, please relieve us of the bondage of self. It doesn't say, please relieve me of bondage as self. No. Because it isn't bondage as self. We're not bound as self. There's the bondage of self. It's an activity. Yeah? And even these talks, the head can use them to re reinforce what you're not. I'm not saying it will succeed, but it's going to attempt to because it's mechanical. Whatever it comes in contact with, it arises. Yeah? The narration claims the event and puts you in it, either as the cause of it or at the effect of it. That's what it does. Yeah? And then we proceed, as we get older usually, to try to get out of it as it. And that's why it doesn't work. <laughs> How can you get out of an imaginary place? by realizing you were never in an imaginary place. It would feel like you got out, but it would take no time or effort to get out because it, it's based, the real, the out is based on not being in. That's why effort and thought and time aren't assisting us in this pursuit because you would use that, all that shit to try to get out of something that you're really in. If you use that to try to get some, out of something you're not really in, it reinforces you're in. You see? That's the whole movement right there. We use thought and effort to get out of what we're not in, and all that effort to get out of what we're not in reinforces the reality of the in that we're not in. Yeah? It's, there's nothing bad in anything. It just doesn't work. Yeah? So you see seeking any activity that's being used to reinforce the idea of the non-existent thing can't destroy the non-existent thing. Even though the activity is crowned as the way I'm going to get out of the non-existent thing is a spiritual path, it's actually reinforcing the reality of the non-existent thing. How can it destroy it? That's the dilemma. If that hasn't fit, then if you keep trying it, if that fits, that shoe's going to fit sometime. Yeah, because the spirituality is going to exhaust itself. It's going to serve you by failing. Yeah. I mean, I did it already with cocaine addiction. If I could have gotten out of self as a self, I would have through cocaine. I gave it a complete 100% fucking effort and thought. And you know what? You can't transcend an imaginary fucking thing or imaginary place. There's no transcendence. So I've learned it not through spiritual, 30 years of spiritual practice. I had enough of spiritual practice. I learned it through like... Uh, the Evelyn Wood Speed Course, which is cocaine retreats, 10 days, <laughs> every few weeks, and years of fucking highs and lows that that kind of lifestyle brings you into, yeah? And I didn't get killed by it, so when I started to hear these ideas, I could see them completely illustrated through my drug use and also the spiritual practices, but the drug use use were illustrated. They were incredibly clear. It was the same of thing happening. I was trying to use me to get out of me or I was trying to use me to get into me. It was either way, but there was a fundamental mistake going on. Self can't get into self, nor can it get out of self. Yeah. <laughs> I have to keep doing this because my ear keeps closing. So it's a weird experience. So. Whatever. I hope that helped or didn't help, but...
here for the next. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm always ready. Yeah. Sometimes I'm muted. Um, and yeah, Unless Kaiser, for a few people. Who is it? Well, Kaiser was really funny. He mentioned that uh, Art was playing whack-a-mole with his hand. It's been going up and down. Oh, Art, do you want it? <laughs> now it's back up. Okay, I'll ask him to unmute. Hey, Paul. Hey. Oh, it's Art. Right. Art, right. how are you? Hey, I feel like my brain is melted right now. Fantastic. <laughs> Open your mouth and let it out. <laughs> That's the question. Okay. Um, yeah. My question is... Fuck, man. This traveling lighter, I feel that the shoe fits. But even with the traveling lighter, there's still stuff, you know? There's still, I, well, w one thing I have a problem with, it feels like a problem, is that I, I judge other people and then I judge myself for that. You know what I mean? I don't just accept well, that. Well, that's no not you, bro. Anything. All right. All right. All right. Can I just jump in? Yeah, let's jump in. Not, let's just uh, do an autopsy on that. So you judge others. First of all, you don't judge others. The mental state judge others. Yeah. And then there's a claiming of it that implies it's you. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. now you judge others and then you judge yourself for judging others. Yeah. yeah, this is the, uh, <laughs> it's sort of like getting trampled by a bull. It, it, it steps on you, then steps on you again. <laughs> and then if you try to get up, it gives you a kick to the head. <laughs> Do you see the diagnosis? Though very simple. There was judging others happens all fucking day. This is insane. This whole system works on comparison yeah? yeah it's judging all fucking day i can't stand when people say you've got to stop judging it's imp that's ridiculous <laughs> it's insane this is what i can't stand about certain stuff all right there's an <laughs> assumption that you have power over shit that you have really nothing to do with yeah yeah so all right i'm gonna stop judging <laughs> You'll be judging like five minutes later. <laughs> yeah. Seemingly, it's not you. So what's yeah. judging isn't you. Yeah. 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 And then what's what's pointing that you're pointing out the judging of others isn't you. <laughs> so the judging of others isn't you doing it. And what's pointing it out isn't you either. Those are, that's the the thief and the policeman aspect of the dance of self. Yeah, selfing. Yes, you had just described it perfectly. So first of all, there was me judging others. That's the thief. Yes, oh. And then there's the self that now starts judging you, that other self, for judging others. Yes, you see it? Yes. That's it. That it does this zillions of times <laughs> every day. You can watch it. I'll go over it once again. You said two statements. You went, you know, I'm, I'm judging others, and then I judge myself for judging others. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. the thing is, take out that it was you. So there's judging of others, and then there's judging you. What's the difference, really? You're judging others and then you're judging you. Yeah, you're neither the other or the you in a sense. It's self, yeah, judging others and then self judging the self that it sees was judging others. Yes, has nothing to fucking do with you. Well, then does that stop eventually? No, it doesn't stop, but you see it more. And then there's, a, again, the, the extreme drama, like the mini season, season, 
the miniseries that turns into a 45-year-old fucking syndicated show, the art show, has a gradual, a quick turnaround from deep seriousness and drama to satire. Yeah? Yeah. And now the star of the show is also in the audience laughing at the star of the show. <laughs> While the star of the show is taking itself very seriously. <laughs> there isn't the star of the show and then the other star berating the star of the show. No. You've seen through that. You see the star of the show from what you are in a way and you take it less seriously. Yeah. yeah. You don't put it a second self of judging the one who judged, you know. You, it, that sort of stops, that stops a lot, yeah. So you just see the clown, you know. First you see the setting of, you know, uh, NCI, whatever. But then the clown appears, you start joke. you start laughing about it, and there's no, the second self doesn't even show up, so to speak. Yeah? Yeah. Because you play both roles, you see. That's the funny thing. You play the both roles of the selfie. Now you've, you've retired from the second role, which is really what allows you to travel later. So now the second self that judges the one who judged is gone <laughs> and you can laugh at the one who's judging yeah yeah does it also have to do with like an expecting things could be different or should be you know what i mean like rather than just letting the movie be what it is and not judging it but you you but no there's judgment in the movie it's part of the movie yeah it, it doesn't have to be part of the audience though yeah, there's no more of this second judging of ju yeah, j judging that yeah. I should react to different fears. Yes, but. exactly. That's where acceptance comes in. When the second sense of self is is uh, taking the acceptance takes the the place of the second sense of self that judge that then there's forgiveness and acceptance for the first art. Yeah. Yeah, you see it. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I, yeah. When it's self trying to get out of self, it's insane. But if that second one is now replaced by what you are, there's a lot of acceptance for the first self, you know? And of course, there isn't a first self, but that action figure, there's a lot of an acceptance for it. Yeah, where before it was a lot of fucking punishment and demands to be different and better. Well, yeah. maybe this is like a mental trick, but I like to view everybody as babies sometimes. Like you wouldn't judge a baby for, you know, crying or doing this or that. And try to, I try to see everybody like that if I can sometimes. Well, this is the case is, in my sense, it's different. The judging continues, but it's not taken seriously. Yeah, I'm not a believer. The judging will change, but you're not going to initiate the change, so to speak. Yeah? It just changes as you outgross things. Yeah? Travel lighter. Yeah. See, see, if you're in, you don't see the bigger movie. So there's art in the movie, and then there's art that's the critic of art in the movie. That's the movie. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I'm the film analyst, you know what I mean? Reading meaning into it or something. Well, you're not, thank God. But it's that, that <laughs> reading meaning into shit has been used to imply it's a you. That it's right. art that's doing that. But art isn't doing it, yeah? Right. Art doesn't even know how to do it. I like to see art try to give meaning to things. <laughs> Because there is no art? Well, just see it. They, they, it doesn't know how, all right, art, let's, tell me how you think. Let's see it, all right? <laughs> I, take, I take nothing and I make it into a thought and then the thought seems to attack me. 
That's insane. The most we do is we notice shit, yeah? Yeah. And then a lot of shit we don't notice, and then we notice it finally by its effects. But basically, as an action figure, we're not a cause, we're not causing much at all. <laughs> and if you look at the basic action figure programming, 99% of it is on automatic, right? <laughs> Something new better to give it any real power. Can you imagine if you had to pump your heart, you would have forgotten and you'd been dead like the first hour. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you're saying there's no free will. But you feel like you have it. Yeah. Yeah, so why, so why fuck with it? Well, after the fact, there's a claiming of, oh, I did that. Is that where the sense of a free will comes from? The, the claiming? Of course, the cl because if you didn't claim the doing and imply the doer, whose life would it be anyway? <laughs> really? The narrative has to have some fundamental assumptions to even get off the ground, really. And one of them is, of course you're the doer. Yeah? And of course you had free will. And therefore, you can feel pride because look what you chose to do, or you can feel guilt and remorse because what you did, what you did sucked, or you didn't do what you should have done. So it, it gets like uh, so many bounces off of one throwing the ball at the wall once. It just keeps bouncing and bouncing and bouncing, making more up of you, yeah? fills up all the space and then you can't fucking see anything. All you're doing is listening to a narration and you're basically pantomiming yourself through a day. And then you, and want, you, you feel why you're not satisfied or content or you feel like whatever, because you're, you're sort of uncomfortably numb in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Filling up the space. So like, if you don't, don't do that. Know, if you don't know that the art that you have grown to seemingly be is manufactured, what else don't you know? Well, I, don't you don't I, know I don't think that, I don't think If you're not aware of that, what else are you not aware of? I mean, that's a fundamental plank there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I know anything. Yeah. Great. <laughs> You'll find out a lot. That's what's cool. What? You find out? You'll find out a lot if you don't know anything. Well, you'll just keep finding out what you're not or what you don't know. Well, you'll find out a lot. Yeah. I don't want to categorize it, but you're, you're going to find out a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Thanks, Paul. Fuck. That's You're welcome, Mark. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Art. That was great. Thanks for keeping your hand up. Yeah. Thumbs up. <laughs> Any more hands? It's really weird. Wow. Mm. No hands popping up. Oh, no? Oh, no. All right. All right. Robert, Robert, our friend Robert from New Zealand, uh, asking to unmute now. Yeah, hi, Paul. Hey, Robert. Yeah, I haven't got a question. It's just about your ear. I think you need to uh, have some suction on it. You've probably got full of wax. I went to the guy today and it got worse. <laughs> oh. I don't have, my hole is like a pinprick from the cold white water over the years. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's surface here. Yeah, it's almost closed, and this one's better, but this one's really, yeah. Okay. So he, uh, he's like 97 now or something, <laughs> and uh, I don't know if he was on top of his game. <laughs> yeah. So I came home worse than I got there, but I love the guy. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank but thanks. You. Thanks for the concern. Okay.
Yeah. Nice to see you, Robert. Anyone else? Yeah. Send me all your uh, herbal remedies. <laughs> I may have to try stuff. All, all right. right, let me say hello to Fritz and everyone. Wait, wait, wait. hold on. Paul, oh, hold on a second. I just, there's, this isn't a question. Um, it's just Stacy L. by chat already asked anybody if they would be interested in um, going over ACIM together. So I was going to reply to her, and I'm just going to let her know about one little one that I go to. But yeah, in general, um, if anybody wants to contact me because of what Stacy just asked, that's a course of miracles. Good. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to be interested, Paul. But um, so I'm just wanted to get back to Stacy before we shut off. That's all. And I'll reply oh, yeah, to her. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to pause you for a second, and I'm going to reply to her. And now you go ahead and say bye. Oh, all right. Thank you. All right. Uh, nice. Well, Mike, thanks for everything. Yeah. And uh, there's Richard Ty. Nice to see you, Richard. Judith, as always, fantastic. Susan, I basically just see your hand. That's nice. Kerry, always a pleasure. Walter from the, the Netherlands. Yes, you're up a little late today. Or up early, whatever. Jono, nice to see you, Jono. Yeah, you're looking very comfortable. Tommy, nice to see you, Tommy. Tommy H. Thanks everyone for coming. Robert, nice to see you. Gary, as always. Gary and George, very two interesting characters. One in the corner, one from the void. Yeah. We got Alan. Alan is, is, turn, is completely gone now. That's great, Alan. Congratulations. Sander, someday, Sander. <laughs> I just, Clifford, nice to see you, my friend. And Chiang Mai, Fritz, under the, he's under the right virtual reality. <laughs> We've got John Walker, my man from uh, Melbourne. I want to, I'll see you in Sassafras when we go up there, hopefully. Yeah. We got uh, Jacob, Jacob from Seattle. Yes, nice to see you, Jay. Go. <laughs> Kaiser, Kaiser, thank you so much for all the service. You're coming around, Kaiser. That's good. Yes. We got Zlatko, my main man. I'm addicted to water. He's my water dealer. Yes. We got Virginia. We got John R. I think John R. I heard you in the pre-chat, pre-Zoom. You're from Byron Bay, eh? Also. I want you to build a bungalow in Byron Bay, <laughs> pay for two people. Yeah, you're very <laughs> welcome. Nice to see you, Joyce. It's a pleasure having you over at the house, honey. We'll have you over again. Yeah? Yariv, you got to come back to the house soon. We'll call you up. We may have something soon. Julia, she's in the uh, Queen's parlor there. Nice to see you, Julia. Amelia says hello. Yeah. I had to lock her up in the closet just to teach her a lesson. <laughs> we got Dennis, Dennis from LA. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks for all the support, Dennis. Keith from Petaluma, fantastic. Stacy L, one of my earliest devotees who didn't know she was a devotee. She's, uh, she wonders why she gets that Zen Bitslap monthly newsletter. You're a lifetime member. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, we're okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Nice to see you, Art. Again. Johannes, nice to see you, my friend. Chelsea, I don't see you. John S. with a nice car or something. I don't know what he's doing. Hillary, I hope it, uh, our little thing helped. Whatever. Marianne. Mike Savini, John Bezerra, I think in Delaware. Man, deep. I should talk to some people from Delaware. I know. Tell them I'm doing this. Josh, Josh is uh, 
Oh, he's painting my old job, or he's doing some, uh, yeah. All right, Josh. That may be leading you to a, an incredible seat assignment, so keep on painting. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for uh, the platform. Yeah, and uh, yeah. If anyone has any herbal ideas about the, the year, send it to Mike, please, and he'll send them to me. Yeah. Is that all right, Mike? Of course. So I don't get all the emails. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks. See ya. Sure. Fantastic Bye. job, Thank you. everyone. Yes. Bye-bye. The room will stay open, so, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Stop Hi. recording, Mike. Uh, what? Stop recording. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. <laughs> okay, stop.